It's like hacking the system. You get to keep the soul lesson, but you don't actually have to hold that memory and take it with you and take that charge with you into other aspects of your life. Hello, gorgeous souls, and welcome back to another episode of the Manifestation Bay podcast. I hope you are doing amazing. I accidentally sat into a tree that I have here in my podcast studio and it just went straight into my head. Ow. (laughs) As I started this episode, today is a little more casual. I don't have my cameras on today because your skincare obsessed girl just got a, not a hydrofacial, a micro needling facial which means my face right now is bright red. It is swollen. I'm like, this ain't a good look for YouTube right now. So I'm sorry for everyone who is expecting to have a video podcast this week. Unfortunately, you're just going to have to hear my voice via audio and hopefully you are okay with that. So today I wanted to share a tool with you. It was on my heart to share a tool to help you change your past. And by change your past, what I mean by that is to change the meaning of your past, the beliefs, the emotions, the thoughts, the scripts, everything that came from the past that is now negatively affecting you in your present moment and negatively creating the future. I want to give you a tool that I learned a while ago that has been instrumental in helping me literally change my reality because I'm no longer replaying memories from the past that so desperately want to be cleared and so desperately want to be healed that life just keeps giving me more and more and more reflections and reasons why I need to heal this old pattern and not knowing how to heal it until realizing, oh my God, there is an actual tool that I can use. It's not a new tool. In fact, it's been taught before by Neville Goddard. If you guys are familiar with Neville Goddard, he's like a big manifestation teacher. There's a lot of like very Neville Goddard obsessed manifestation teachers out there who only teach by his principles. If you've ever heard of the law of assumption that comes from Neville Goddard, he coined it. And so people just get real crazy in a good way um, around his teachings. So I wanted to share this tool because I was recently at a speaking event. Um, I got invited to speak at Girlfriends in Business around actually something that has nothing to do with manifestation. It was around the topic of creating digital courses. And in, of course, you know, me speaking, of course, I'm going to bring up the energetics. I'm going to bring up psychology. I'm going to bring up manifestation. And I wanted to share this tool with this group of beautiful women. I think there's like 70 women in the room. This event was hosted by my friend Lori Harder. And someone actually, she was the one asking me questions. And she asked a question that was essentially cultivated from the group. And she asked, Catherine, what do you do when you receive negative comments online that really trigger you? And it just reminded me of this tool that I shared with the room. And I encouraged everyone in the room to implement this tool, to use this tool um, and to see how it changes their life. Because once you take out the energetic trigger, the emotional trigger from a memory in the past by literally rewiring it in your brain, then you are not leaking your energy back into the past, recreating the past and wondering why am I living the same year over and over and over and over and over again? Why am I literally recreating things that happened to me when I was five years old? And so this tool is essentially going to help you nip that in the bud and just create a completely different reality where even though that memory may still have happened to you, even though this situation, this circumstance, this event is very much real, it's you know, it's something that was a part of your soul contract to experience. You're still going to keep the lessons that you learned from these memories because I would never actually take away the bad things that happened to me in my life because they literally taught me very valuable, important soul lessons that I can take on with me into my future lifetimes. I would never actually take that away from me, but I would take away the emotional charge and I would actually rewire them so that 
It's almost like they never actually happened. It's like hacking the system. You get to keep the soul lesson, but you don't actually have to hold that memory and take it with you and take that charge with you into other aspects of your life. So that's awesome. I'm so excited to share this in this episode. You know, I was thinking all week like, hmm, you know, the next two weeks of my life is going to be very, very busy with the launch of the Manifestation Babe Academy. I don't know what to podcast about this week. And it just came to me in the event last weekend where I really wanted to share this tool with you. And speaking of tools, this is just one of many, 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 many different tools that I offer my students um, inside my programs like the Manifestation Babe Academy. So with that being said, before I go further, I just wanted to quickly remind you that the Monday that I dropped this episode, we are officially one week out from launching the Manifestation Babe Academy. It's going to be the only and last launch of the year, and I don't know the next time I open it. For those of you who are waiting for MBA to open, which is short for Manifestation Babe Academy, you know that we've already been waiting 18 months for this open. So it's getting more and more spaced out, not because I don't love the program or don't want to launch it, but just because life is so different for me nowadays. And I, when I have students in my programs, I give them my all. So in order for me to create a six month period where I can really give my students my all, I just have to make sure that it's something that I can actually commit to at this time. So we're officially at that time. I created MBA from a very valuable life experience that I had when I was 23 years old. I was living on my grandma's couch. I was broke. I was depressed. I had no idea what my life was going to become. I just got out of a six year relationship. I just let go of a business um, in the network marketing space. I uh, decided to, you know, not go to medical school. I moved to LA with just $80 in my bank account and I had nowhere to live except for good old grandma's house in her section eight apartment. So it's a very small government subsidized apartment that I lived in with my grandma, actually with my grandparents. A lot of people are like, do you have a grandpa? Like where, where was your grandpa at this time? I don't know why I just call it my grandma's couch, even though it very much is my grandparents' couch for whatever reason. It's just my grandma that pops up in my mind. So we're just going to go with that. I was $25,000 in debt. I was just very, very lost in my life. And I've had knowledge of manifestation up until that point that I was, you know, gathering from other manifestation teachers that I have been reading, uh, you know, their books since I was 16 years old, but just nothing was actually working and I couldn't figure out why. And all of the processes, all of the tools, all of the components of the Manifestation Babe Academy was literally me figuring out how it actually works. I feel like I crack the code on manifestation especially understanding that not everyone manifests in the same way and everyone needs different tools. Everyone needs different energetic processes that are actually going to unlock their dream life for them. And MBA is the most universal process that works for everyone because I've broken it down to what makes manifestation work for people on a universal basis. And then layered on top of that, all the things that make you energetically, uniquely, spiritually, soul level different. And what are all the tools that are going to work for you, you know, in a very unique way. So I'm super proud of this program, super, super proud of it. And I have you know, been able to replicate the results that I have had for myself through Manifestation Babe Academy with thousands and thousands and thousands of other students. And I have been receiving insane testimonials this week um, as a favor to my students that I've had in the past. I've asked them to send me just a little blurb so I can help, you know, things I can put up on the sales page, the enrollment page, just so other people can see what's possible for them through MBA. And it's been actually fucking insane, the testimonials that have come through for MBA. So very, very proud of it. If you want to make sure that you are in, like if you're feeling like some something within you is just calling you to be inside this program. I know that I very much resonate with this uh, methodology of, you know, trying to figure out what should I invest in? 
who should I work with? Which programs should I get into? And for me, it's just this calling where I don't know why, but I just know that I have to work with this person. I have to learn from them. Like I, I just need to be in their energy and learn their processes. And there's something in here that is going to change my life. So if you have a very similar calling where for some reason you're hearing me talk about it and you just can't stop thinking about it, it's literally your soul putting you in resonance with this program. Like there's no accident that you're hearing about it right now. So if you want to make sure that you don't miss it this year, we open officially on October 14th. We close on October 18th. It goes by very, very fast. So my biggest suggestion is for you to be on the wait list. You can get on the wait list by heading over to manifestationbabe.com slash MBA. Again, that's manifestationbabe.com slash M as in manifestation B as in babe, A as in academy slash MBA. I'll also put in the show notes as well so you can just click and make it super easy for you to get inside. Okay, so going into changing the past, are you guys ready for this tool? It's really, really simple, but I want to kind of make this an experiment. Like let's make this the prerequisite to getting inside of MBA. Like if if there's a tool that I can give you right now that can massively radically shift your life, I want you to send me a DM this week. I want you to actually do it do it for the next, you know, five to seven days, even though I'm going to give you quote unquote homework to do it for the next 21 days. Just do it 10 times in a row for the next five days and send me a DM because I I just know it's going to be life changing. I just know it's going to be life changing. And I'll give you an actual example where it's been life changing for me, where I've seen a massive radical shift. And in case you resonate with a very similar memory, then you can just put that into practice, knowing that that's what it looks like to do this thing. And then you can apply it to other memories that come up for you. Okay. So how do we change the past? How do we change the past? Okay. This is what you're going to do. I teach this process inside my programs called leaning into feelings, following the feelings. And what that means is let's say you get triggered. Something triggers you. Your mom says something. Joe Schmo on the internet says something. Someone sends you an email. Like there's something that happens where you just feel this like twinge inside of you. It just pulls on your emotional strings. For whatever reason, it makes you angry, it annoys you, it frustrates you, you feel like it pulls on the belief that you're not enough, Um, it triggers comparisonitis within you, whatever it is, that feeling, you want to just isolate that feeling away from the thing that actually happened. So let's say that someone called you fat, for example, which has happened to me many times in my postpartum journey that made me realize, oh my fucking God, I have things to clear from my past because it's not actually that I'm fat. I don't actually like think that about myself. But if I were to be honest with subconsciously, is there a belief that believes that? Of course there is because There are actual things that were said to me when I was eight years old that created an emotional response to things that people were saying to me. And then that triggered this whole thing where I then believed that about myself and then struggled with weight throughout my whole childhood, teenagehood, adulthood, and so on and so forth. Just imagine for a second waking up every single morning to your literal dream life. You have the career of your dreams. You wake up next to the partner of your dreams. You drive to breakfast in the car of your dreams. You pay for your morning coffee from the bank account of your dreams. And you and your family vacation in the dreamiest spots on earth. You are living a total vision board life. Well, you don't have to imagine anymore. Because my free three-day live experience is guaranteed to teach you how to make this your reality. And it's officially open for registration and we start really soon. If you're tired of getting wishy-washy results from wishy-washy manifestation content, now is your chance to learn from an actual expert who's been doing this for almost two decades now with tens of thousands of students and tens of thousands of testimonials and success stories. It's time to go all in on your dream life and manifest everything you've ever wanted. Head over to manifestationbabe.com slash go all in to sign up right now. Again, that's manifestationbabe.com slash go all in. 
And as an added bonus, I'm also offering some pretty epic prizes just for participating in the live event. Your dream life is waiting for you and it's time to make it your reality. Manifestationbabe.com slash go all in. Lean into that feeling. What is that feeling? And you're going to get really present with it where you're going to close your eyes and just like really sit with it and just allow that feeling to percolate. Maybe you tune into the sensations that you feel in your body. Like, is it giving you a stomach ache? I know that I've had physical stomach aches to certain emotions where I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. I'm actually physically feeling it. Maybe it's giving you tingles in your chest. Maybe you're feeling like a weight on your shoulders. Maybe you're feeling a tightness in your chest, a tightness in your throat. Whatever that feeling is, that's what I want you to really lean into and figure out like, oh, what is that tied to? Or that's the feeling that I need to focus on. And once you do, once you get present, you want to follow the feeling. And it's a very like, there's no like scientific, practical, logical, analytical way that I mean by this. It's just you being present with it and just seeing and being curious with where is the feeling taking you. I can't tell you that it's going to happen in 30 seconds. I can't tell you that it's going to take two minutes. It might take up to five minutes, but just by being present with it, eventually that feeling will take you to a memory. Now you can trigger the memory by asking like, how old is this feeling? And subconsciously, your subconscious has to answer the question. And so you might be like two years old, four years old, seven years old, 10 years old, whatever it is. Okay. So you're following the feeling and then asking yourself, how old is the feeling? And a memory is going to pop up for you. So the memory is going to pop up. And so for me, for example, because I'm going to take you through an actual example where I've done this many times and actually rewired something where I, I don't have emotions when it comes to this old memory. So the memory for me is I'm eight years old. I'm in dance class. My mom and my grandma kind of like forcefully signed me up for dance class, probably because they want to be involved in dance and they're just kind of, you know, projecting their their goals and dreams onto me, which has happened a lot to me as a kid. If you know my story, it's happened in the field of medicine. I almost became a doctor, not because I wanted to be a doctor, but because someone in my family did. So anyway, I'm in dance school and the very first comment that my dance teacher makes to my parents, I'll never forget, is she starts looking me up and down in my body and just starts telling my grandma that I need to be put on a very strict diet, that I need to stop eating sugar, I need to stop eating fat, I need to stop eating X, Y, Z, I can't eat this, I can't eat that, I really need to be on a strict diet because I'll never be a good dancer unless I look a certain way. Um, She was you know, commenting on my stomach, like just very like I I just I'll never forget like for the first because I had no concept of my body. Like my body was just my body. You know, as kids, like we don't have any meanings that we attach about our body, you know, in relation to societal expectations. Anyway, I remember that, you know, all of a sudden learning like, oh, my God, I am overweight. I'm fat. I need to lose weight. Oh, my God, I need to watch what I'm eating, all this stuff. And it just carried on for multiple, multiple years where every time I would dance with my partner, she convinced my partner, my dance partner, because I was in ballroom dancing, to make comments about my weight to like motivate me to continue to diet so I can be a better dancer. He would constantly tell me if I lost 20 pounds, I would be a better dancer. How we lost a competition only because I was fat, only because the judges think I'm fat. Um, That's all my fault. Like everything that we have failed at as dancers is simply because Catherine Zinkina is overweight. That's the only reason. It has nothing to do with my skills. It has nothing to do with his skills. It has nothing to do with desire for wanting to be a better dancer. It has nothing to do with practice. It has nothing to do with that. It's just that Catherine is fat, <laughs> right? And so like looking back at that, I'm like, oh my God, this is terrible. But for me, you guys can see how this is a program that ran so much of my life. It has subconsciously been in there as a massive, massive pain, a massive trauma, a massive drama that has eventually turned into like this loathing of my body and this insane self-consciousness around my body. And I'm so grateful in retrospect for having this experience because the level of love that I now have for my body for the first time in my life this year is insane. You guys, I actually look in the mirror and I go, wow, you're so beautiful. And it's a genuine feeling that I experience because of the work that I've done and because of this particular tool. So let's say I have a memory. I lock in on a certain memory. 
And notice how your mind will play the memory exactly how it happened back then. But what you're going to do, and it's called the revision method, so it's Neville Goddard's revision method, what you're going to do is you're going to replay that memory, but the next time you do it, you're going to edit it. So you're literally going to revise the past. So the thing that you wish so bad that never happened, never happens, okay? The thing that you wanted to happen instead is the thing that happens. What was unsaid to you that you really wanted to be said, that you think your life would turn out so differently if it were said, make it said. See that person saying it to you. You know, the thing that was said to you, like in my case, you know, the the comments that were made about my body that I so badly wish that were never said that I think my life would, would have turned out differently if it wasn't said then I would replay that memory with those things never being said and maybe just editing with the things that I actually really wanted to be said. Uh, Whatever you deeply desire to have happened is exactly what's going to happen instead. So what this looks like is for this example of the dance teachers making comments on my weight, I would literally go back to that specific memory where I get enrolled, it's my first day, the teacher's looking me up and down, I would just delete the part where she's looking me up and down. And instead, she's like, oh, my gosh, Catherine, I'm so excited to have you here. I think you're going to love it. I think you're going to thrive in the dance community. We are so excited to teach you these awesome dances. We focus on these 10 dances in the in the Latin standard style of dancing. You're going to learn the cha-cha, the samba, the jive, the rumba, the pasa doble. You're going to learn the tango, the waltz, the Viennese waltz, the I'm forgetting some dances already. What's the other dances? It doesn't matter. There's 10 of them. That's all I know. For anyone who didn't know, I grew up as a competitive ballroom dancer. Now you know. These are all the dances that I used to do. So anyway, I would see that. And then running through the dances, I would hear like, oh my gosh, Catherine, you did such a beautiful job. You look so beautiful. Wow. Look at the way your legs move. Look at the beautiful form that you have. Oh my gosh. Like, I would just run it through exactly what I needed as a child to hear in that moment for me to fully enjoy dance and feel safe in that dance class. I would see myself, you know, any fights or bickers that I would have with my partner, they never happened. Me and my partner are thriving. We're having the best time. We're dancing. We're moving around the room. People are clapping for us because we're good dancers, not just because we look a certain way. Right. So I would revise that and edit it and I would replay it in my mind at least 10 times. And then what I would do is I would do that and take that memory and revise it and replay it over and over and over again for, again, my suggestion for you is 10 times. You can do it as many times as you want, but for at least 21 days. So they say it takes about 21 to 66 times to do something to make it an actual neural circuit in your brain. So 10 times 21, that sounds like a good number to me, 210. So you would run through the memory 210 times over and over and over again. And guys, doing this has been so massive for me where I'm so grateful for the lessons that I learned because I wouldn't love my body to this degree if it wasn't for these negative situations that I had to go through. But at the same time, I literally changed my future. Like I just changed the fact that all these negative beliefs that I had about my body where it's like, oh, my metabolism is just too slow. It's my genetics. Like I'm never going to lose weight. It's hard for me to lose weight, blah, 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 blah. All this stuff that just percolated in my brain for most of my life. I don't have those anymore. So now when I look at my body, I'm like, wow, I'm so strong. I'm so sexy. Like look at how amazing I look. Look at how healthy I am. Look at my ability to do these difficult Pilates moves in my Pilates class. I have legs to walk every single day wherever I need to go. Like imagine not having legs and how hard that would be. And I just have so much compassion and empathy for people who, you know, don't have their legs. And just I'm so grateful. And it it just brings me so much gratitude. I look at my body from so many different angles that I just wouldn't have First of all, if it wasn't for the fact that it had happened to me, which gives me the soul lessons. And number two, I can change the memory in my brain to where it actually never happened. And in fact, the good thing that I really wanted to happen actually happened. And then I'm installing new beliefs. 
because I'm emotionally connecting. And this is one thing I forgot. You want to make sure you're emotionally connecting to this. So if you're replaying it and revising it in a way where you're not actually having an emotional response to it, where you're feeling goosebumps or you're feeling uh, tears in your eyes and you're just emotionally moved by this new memory, then it isn't going to work as effectively. I'm not going to say it's not going to work because yes, of course, repetition is you know part of subconscious rewiring but it's going to be the emotional side of it, the emotions that really get you to rewire your subconscious mind that are going to take it to the next level. So there's a tool. Do this until it becomes an actual neural circuit and tell me how you feel about yourself, how you see yourself, how you see others, what you believe to be true after doing this. I think it's one of the easiest, most effective ways to change a belief system Um, And like I said, I offer so many tools just like this inside of MBA. So if you're someone who is like, I really want to get into the nitty gritty around healing my past and healing my belief systems and shifting my energy so that I can actually create my dream life where it's not just, you know, manifestation is not just about like, oh, what do I want? Oh, I just have to think positive about it now. Like, no, there's so many things in our subconscious brain that is just working against us because we don't have the tools to shift it and to rewire it and to make it where we actually believe that we can make anything and everything possible for ourselves and and happen, whether it's in the area of money, in the area of career, in the area of relationships, in the area of fertility, in the area of creativity, in the area of fun, in the area of adding value into the world, like whatever area of life it is for you that you're struggling with, It's these tools that are actually going to make a difference. And I think that this is why my program has been so effective for so many people is because of all of these tools that are actually rewiring your brain. So anyway, try this out. DM me this week. Let me know how it's helped you. I can't wait to hear. And for any of you who are feeling called to get inside of MBA, head over to manifestationbabe.com slash MBA to get on the wait list and be the first to join. All right. With that being said, I will see you guys inside of MBA. I'll see you guys inside of the next episode that I drop on the podcast. I love you all so much and hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye.